Hello and welcome back to the Real Mockery Podcast. This is the second edition. This time we're going to try to do things a little different. So, let's get it started, shall we? What What we're we're watching. watching. So in this portion of the podcast, we're going to talk about everything that we've been watching within the past few days. And uh, we talked a little bit yesterday, but anyway, we watched The Clovich Killer. It's a movie filmed in Kentucky. It stars Charlie Plummer, who played Michael Thompson in Boardwalk Empire, and Dylan McDermott, who was in Stalker in American Horror Story, and Madison Beatty, Beatty as Cassie. Anyway, um, Charlie Plummer plays Tyler. His dad is Dylan McDermott, Don. And what it is is the Clovich killer has been on a hiatus. I think it was like 10 years, and uh, it was unsolved. He killed a bunch of women. And um, Tyler begins to suspect that his father, Don, could be the killer. And he eventually, uh, the kids around him turn him into a pervert. And he eventually uh, gets in touch with Cassie. And they go on the hunt and they begin investigating Don, trying to figure out whether or not he's the killer. The the story is actually pretty good. The acting was kind of hit and miss. For a movie filmed in Kentucky, nobody in it even tried to use a southern accent, which is probably a good thing, because a lot of times they'll try their southern accents and they're terrible, and they ruin the movie for people who really know the southern accent. Not saying it's a good thing, but they really ruin the movie. Um, the ending was kind of somewhat of a twist. It was kind of stupid, too, but uh, is it pretty good for a... It wasn't a horror movie, like serial killer movie, whatever, but it was pretty good the way they portrayed uh, Don, the serial killer. He was really a ripoff of BTK, but it was really good the way it showed how he had uh, got obsessed with dressing as a woman and bondage, tying himself up and whatnot. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I could recommend it if you got nothing else to watch and you access it pretty easy and you like Dylan McDermott. It wasn't anything memorable, but it wasn't terrible either. It's probably a 6 out of 10 or so. And next up, we're not watching it right now, but I just found out, I know, I run a dang TV site, just found out that Podark Season 4 is out. So I'm going to start watching it pretty soon. And Season 5 is the last one. The uh, Season 3 was really good. It's been so long ago, it's hard to remember. It takes forever for these British shows to have new seasons. But it was really good last season. Second season was hit and miss. Um, Season three, though, is really the Karn brothers. Drake and Sam. And more, more, what was their name? More Linda, more Winda. Uh, They really stole the spotlight along with uh, Caroline and Dwight. The doctor and the woman he married. They really stole the spotlight. Really enjoyed them and uh, Demel's brothers. And uh, it looks like they're going to be back for season four, which is definitely a good thing. But I um, plan on starting watching that either tonight or tomorrow and start recapping it so you guys can check it out. I don't know what episode they're on right now on TV or PBS. I don't even know if it's even on PBS yet. But either way, the recaps will start being on there pretty soon. So be sure to look out for that. And now moving on. What What you're you're watching. watching. All right, in this uh, section of the podcast, we're going to talk about the shows that are getting the most hits on Real Mockery right now. And uh, the one that's been getting all the hits and all the comments the last week or so is 10 Star. And if you've been on the site, you can already see it's not for me. I'm not a big fan of it. I didn't think the story was very good. I thought the acting was cheesy. I thought the story was cheesy where he, um, Tim Roth, Jim Worth, gets drunk and all of a sudden he turns into superhero, whatever. But uh, Tim Tim Roth, he was really good in Rillington Place. Um, really enjoyed him as a serial killer. I guess Reg, Reg Christie, Reginald Christie, I guess was his name. Um, it also has uh, Genevieve O'Reilly who was in Glitch. Glitch is a lot better than 10 Star. If you haven't watched Glitch yet, go back and watch at least the first season. The second season is okay, too. 
probably not as good as the first, but either way. And uh, Ten Star also has Oliver Cooper Smith as Whitey and Christopher Hyderdahl, Hyderall, Hyderdahl as Louis Gangan. There was a couple other ones too. I think Christina Hendricks, but most most of them were just insignificant, honestly. Um, well, it's been renewed for a second season. A lot of the, a lot of the comments you all have put out there. Some people have liked it. Some people haven't. Most haven't, honestly. I see why. But I can see why you'd like it too. It is different. It's set in Canada. Um, it's not bad. It could be better. But it'll be interesting to see where they go now that Whitey's going to be gone. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see again. That's what you are watching. That's what's getting the most hits. I really didn't like it that much myself. But we'll continue recapping it so you guys can stay tuned for that. And also this week you've been looking at Harrow. A lot of you in the States have probably not heard of it. I don't know if it's on streaming sites, but it's in ABC Studios out of Australia. It features Ian, Ian Grufford, Maria Folks, Remy High, um, Darren Glinchin, and Damian Garvey, Ella Newton. What it is, it's... Um, Ian Grufford plays Daniel Harrow. He's a pathologist, does autopsies, and um, I guess uh, they find a body, and he, he works real hard to try to hide it, and it plays out. kind of shows, you know, why he's hiding it, what he's doing, why he's shady around it, and uh, why he's connected to him and his wife. Um, the best one probably in it really was Simon. Remy High, I guess that's how you say his name. He was really the best one in it. He had the most charisma. But um, it was a decent show. I probably enjoyed it better than I did 10 Star. But it was still nothing to write home about. But it was it was decent. All in all, it was decent. Um, I reckon it's going to get a second season too. I don't know when it's going to be coming out. But it's in Australia again. I don't know if it's streaming on anything. It must be. Unless it's playing somewhere else because it's getting a lot of hits now. I guess on an internet movie database it's got a 7.4. That's probably it, maybe a little too high, but that's probably about right. It wasn't too bad. I kind of enjoyed it. Um, I like the first episode with Gary Sweet. If you don't know Gary Sweet, you should watch some of his stuff. He's uh, an Australian actor. Pretty good. Um... He was in something the other day, uh, 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 what was it, um, with a guy from Glitch. Let's see if we can find it. Not House Husbands, but not a small time gangster. Yeah, it's uh, Wake and Fright. I guess it's a remake. I didn't watch the original, but I really liked the, the new one. It was pretty good. It had, like I said, the guy from Glitch, um, Sean Keenan, and Alex Dimitriad, Dimitridas, Dimitriads plays. Uh, I think he played in the slap, didn't he? he? Played in. He played in Underbelly. I know as the runner. Really good too. If you haven't watched the Underbellies, but uh, yeah, be sure to check it out. Wake in fright, Gary Sweet. But uh, anyway, Harrow been getting a lot of hits on mockery this week i guess people are tuning into it nobody's left comments so i don't know if you like it or not let us know anyway we plan on we'll definitely be doing season two recaps for it whenever we get the opportunity whenever it comes out i don't know when it's coming out but we shall see i would assume it'd be probably a while australia is like british they do not rush to get their new seasons out there that's for sure. But it has been confirmed for a season two. I'd assume 2019 sometime. But anyway, we're moving on to the next section. Shat celebrities, Shat are, celebrities selling. are selling. So anyway, yeah, I thought it'd be fun to um, look at the stuff that our celebrities are selling. There's a pretty good chance you've seen this on Alex Trebek, Mr. Jeopardy himself. Um, the colonial pen, you know, you've seen it. The three P's, price, price, price. You know, you've seen it. It's a, 
when you see a celebrity selling something like that on TV, it's like the Toco car warranty, um, emu, what is it, blue emu, you just know that stuff's going to be scam. You got the life lock too, what's the one, Tom Selleck, the Australian, Dream. the Australian Dream, what is it, Tom Selleck that sells the life lock. Anyway, uh, I thought it'd be fun to go look at the BBB comments for the Colonial Pen Life Insurance, and sure enough, they're just as bad as you expect they would be. They're uh, pretty much running the company down the dirt. They still have a decent rating with the BBB. Well, there's like two or three different pages for them. One I saw, they had closed like 80 cases against them, lady complaints, and the BBB was still giving them an A+. I guess just as long as they respond, it's okay. But anyway, if you see your favorite celebrity on TV and they're telling you to do something, to buy this, buy that, you should probably research it first because the Toco car warranty and the um, Colonial pen, there's probably a good chance there's a reason that they're using celebrities. And uh, uh, it makes you wonder how much money they're making on this stuff. You wouldn't even think uh, Alex Trebek would even need to advertise it. I mean, he's making so much money on the show, you would think. But anyhow, let us know if there's any uh, celebrity uh, advertisements that you'd like us to investigate. But the Colonial Pen one, I'd probably avoid it. Go through a legitimate company. Not that any life insurance, health insurance is going to be legitimate. They're all going to do bad things to you one way or another. But anyway, that's the way it is. Golly, golly. Just remember, guys, don't take our word for it. We're, uh, you know, we just, we just do a little podcast. We're not the smartest people out here. So don't take our word for it. Do your own research. Please don't sue us, Colonial Pen and Alex Trebek, because we don't have money to fight back. Anyway, let's move on to the next section. I think this will be pretty interesting. We're going to cover stuff that you probably haven't heard about yet. But if you have, Oh, well, you'll just have to skip forward, deal with it. But anyway, some people will probably enjoy it, and some might not. It is what it is. Here we go. What you what didn't, you know. didn't know. So there's a pretty good chance that you know all about White Man Can't Jump's Woody Harrelson and uh, what was in the other day, the Billboard movie, and he's also True Detective, Zombieland. But you probably didn't know that his daddy, Charles Void Harrelson, was a big organized crime figure. He uh, must have been a pretty bad guy. Pretty interesting. I remember watching um, a documentary of sorts on him on, it was either American Justice. It's probably American Justice. It's one of the Bill Curtis shows. Love Bill Curtis. I think it was American Justice, though. Um Anyway, his name was Charles Void Harrelson. He was born in Love Day, Texas. And supposedly Woody Harrelson acted like he was kind of strange. He didn't really know him very well. But um, um, Harrelson was in trouble quite a bit. Yeah, uh, anyway, uh, Charles, I think Charles, um, Charles Harrelson, he, uh, he was tried for murder. In May of 1968, the murder of Alan Harry Berg, and uh, he's defended by Percy Foreman. He was actually acquitted in 1970, September 1970. Um, they made a memoir, Run Brother Run, about I guess about it. And then he was uh, tried again, another murder, murder for hire, 1968 of Sam DeGliga, DeGliga Jr. and uh, it said that Harrison was paid two thousand dollars for the murder. His uh, he had two trials. The first one ended in a deadlock jury, and he was eventually found, or somebody else was found guilty. He was retried in nineteen seventy three. He was convicted and sentenced to fifteen years in prison. He served five. Was released on good behavior, but it didn't stop there. Um, Harrison would make history. When he would go on to be implicated in the murder of U.S. District Judge John H. Wood Jr., he was shot dead in a parking lot in San Antonio, Texas. He was convicted of killing him after being hired by drug dealer Jamil Chagra. Um, 
I think it said he was like the first judge killed in the 20th century or something. And uh, I guess Woody tried to fight for his dad's release later on. He was also implicated, I guess he imp, 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 implicated himself in the assassinate, assassination of John F. F. Kennedy, believe it or not. I guess uh, he must have been on the grassy knoll or something. But he act like he did it because he was trying to, he was in a standoff with police and he was high on cocaine supposedly and he told them that so that they wouldn't, I guess they'd let him stay free for longer. But I guess some people still think Harrison was involved in it. And uh, anyway, uh, Charles Harrison Harrelson tried to escape with two other inmates in 1995 from Atlanta Federal Penitentiary. It didn't work. They ended up getting sent to... Uh, Supermax in Colorado and uh, he died in March of 2007 from a heart attack said autopsy showed he had severe cor coronary artery disease but anyway that's just a little tidbit kind of makes you wonder how Woody got where he is did he use his father's notoriety to climb up the ladder or did his father's not notoriety push him up the ladder but either way, I guess you got to give him credit for not coming a gangster himself and gunning people down. Still an interesting story. Like I said, I remember watching it on, um, pretty sure it was American Justice. Some of those are on YouTube. If you know where to get them all, tell me, because I'd really like to watch every one of them. They're very interesting. But anyway, that's the story of Charles Harrelson, Woody's daddy. Some people may have not heard of it before. But the next section, we're going to talk about retro TV shows. Now, if you're a fan of Australian drama, you've probably been watching Wentworth. The um, Wentworth is based on the old prisoner cell block H. A lot of people probably already know about it, but if you're not from Australia, you might not. I tell you, it, it was pretty good, very good in the beginning. And it's kind of like the new series now, the Wentworth. It's... The longer it goes, the worse it gets. The B. Smith was played by Lehman. What was yeah, anyway, her name was Val Lehman. She played B. Smith in it. Whenever it first started, though, she was not the main character, believe it or not. Not like she was in the new Wentworth with Danielle McCormick. I don't know where she went to after that. But anyway, uh, um, B. was not the main character. It was actually uh, Karen Travers, I think was her name. She uh, got put in there for killing her husband. There was also another girl that got put in there with her. They claimed that she killed a kid. But it was only supposed to be a miniseries. And it was, I guess it had such good ratings, so many people watched it that they kept it going. And uh, it's kind of like the new one now. It, the old one is definitely better than the new one. It's definitely got more longevity simply because it goes at least 400 episodes without becoming a total shit fest. And the new one now, the last two seasons have not been worth a shit. I mean, that's putting it blatantly, but it hasn't. You can read the reviews on the website. People mention it too. They, they don't like it anymore. It sucks. They're, the writers now are afraid to take chances with the new Wentworth. They coddle the, the new characters. They just coddle them. They let nothing bad happen to them. They're afraid to take chances. And uh, kind of plagued the old one, too. Every now and then something good would happen. But they, uh, the Marie Winter in the old one was probably one of the best characters, her and Vera. But they Marie Winter was going to be a really good character. And every time she set something up to kill somebody brutally, here come B, stop it. And there was never any conclusion. Conclusion. No satisfying conclusion. Yeah, they might get somebody shipped to a mental ward or something, but they almost never killed anybody. It was, I mean, they just, it was just really just a cock tease, put it that way. But the show itself, I mean, it's uh, 692 episodes. Every one of them are on YouTube. The Jock Stewart character. Yeah, the Jock Stewart character was a terrible, mm. terrible, terrible, worst. Mm. And then they got rid of all the good ones. There was a really good guy in it though i think he played the doctor and he turned out to be a serial killer he was freaking fantastic sally wasn't in it very long though and uh maggie kirkpatrick though did really 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 good as the freak 
I don't know what happened with the little girl claiming she molested her and stuff. I think she got away with it or whatever. But still, she did really good as the freak. The freak character in the old prisoner is so much better than the new one. The new one, not blaming uh, Pamela. I think Pamela Rabes, the actress's name, not blaming her. It's the writing. They try to make her too far-fetched. In the old one, she was a lot more realistic, a lot more human. You could sympathize with her a lot more. It was just a better character overall. She also had the little blonde-headed boy. Took him under a wing. I can't remember his name, but it was really, really good. Yeah. But uh, the Vera character was also a lot better back in the Owen. Even though Vera Nell is probably one of the best ones in Wentworth. Weak too. She got weak. Yeah, uh, what was the governor's name? Uh, Meg, Meg, no, not Meg. Uh, the blonde-haired governor with the gap in her teeth. Anyway, yeah, she got weak. She's very liberal and yeah, she made a lot of mistakes. But anyway, the prisoner was still... It's worth a view. It's cult following. Like I said, it's all on YouTube. You don't have to download anything. You can just go watch it. Search for Prisoner Cell Block H. Start at the beginning and watch all of them. Yeah, it's a lot better than the new one. Like I said, more longevity. And um, another thing this week, I seen that... Uh, I guess they were speaking with the guy that was over Top Gun, the director of Top Gun, talking about Tom Cruise doing his own stunts and stuff. I get it. I get that he wants to do his own stunts. He's probably, uh, it's an adrenaline rush for him. And he probably should because he's getting probably paid more than anybody else, so he should take some risk. But he's already broke his dang leg. He's getting old. He's got to be 50-some year old. And he's wanting to learn how to fly fighter pilot pilot uh, flatter jets and stuff it just sounds like a bad omen sounds like a bad incident just waiting to happen i don't know if he'd be like, Denver. It'd be like bob john denver denver, john denver yeah john country roads take me home but anyway uh i don't know if he's brainwashed by the scientology or what but he's going to get himself seriously hurt he's already broke his leg not, I have no intention of watching Mission Impossible or Top Gun, but that's just me. So uh, let's move on to shows that need to be killed. Last night I stayed up a little later than I normally do, and I seen on there the MacGyver, the new MacGyver. Everybody knows it was terrible to begin with, but my God, did they ruin that show. The, the characters have no personality at all none whatsoever and they got too many people and oh when it seemed like it was just macgyver himself out here solving problems it seemed like it always kind of he would always put together some cockamamie scheme to solve it like he'd make an explosive out of a lunchbox the new one he was laying down the new one he was laying down chains in the middle of the road and somehow they stopped the car jerked the car back and stopped it from moving it just made no sense and then he had like five or six different characters with him i guess they had to make an oreo so everybody would be happy but either way it's just too many dang characters and none of them have a good personality they're all lazy written they're all terrible they're boring there's no substance to them whatsoever and i don't even know if old macgyver himself said anything but it was terrible 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 that's a show that i don't know how in the friggin bloody icy hell it ever got a second season i really don't i don't know how it ever got a second season another show i was watching last night was last man standing and i know people like it because it's conservative and whatever it's different and i like tim allen i liked home improvement but i watched the show and the jokes were kind of hit and miss there was a few that were funny but the sad part about it and what really turned me off is the funniest jokes that they had on it kept referring to home improvement why do you home improvement? Why your home improvement? Home improvement, home improvement, home improvement, home improvement, home improvement. That's the only parts of it that was funny. Really, it's the only parts of it that was funny was the home improvement jokes. I, like I said, I like Tim Allen. I like the home improvement, but you got to come up with new material if you want people to like it. And I see why they canceled it, and I hope it works out for them, whatever. Everybody should have something to watch, but you got to go with new jokes, not the home improvement. The two funniest jokes that I heard was about home improvement. Come on. And uh, 
the fresh out fresh off the boat still going it's okay i wouldn't stay up to watch it i'd rather watch me tv and watch the andy griffiths and mashes and gomer piles and all those these new shows are really kind of uh disappointing honestly married with children. yeah i'm watching married with children no ma'am but anyway i guess that's the end of the episode today made it a little bit longer today try to add new stuff to it i hope you all enjoyed it if you have any recommendations if you want to get send us hate mail whatever we don't care just send it along i've already been called sexist because they're podark reviews and i told them how can you be sexist when you're not getting any sex but that's just the way the cookie crumbles that's it guys We'll be uploading it. Hope you'll tune in next time.